Today's sponsor is Audible.com, a leading provider of spoken audio information and entertainment. Listen to audiobooks wherever and whenever you want. And PNP Games, your online source for everything video games. Visit their website at pnpgames.com or at their three retail locations in Winnipeg, Manitoba. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome to the Nintendo Pulse podcast. This is episode number 62. As always, I'm your, lo- your host. I'm also, <laughs> as always, I'm your I'm Lloyd, your Lloyd host, host Hannison. Hannison. Oh my goodness. <laughs> as always, I'm your host, Lloyd Hannison. And failing at the English language yet again. Yikes. <laughs> and joining me as always, Stephen Munn. Stephen, how are you? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, you right. already you're speaking better than I am. <laughs> well, yeah. already, and you, and you just said one word. So there you well, go. Well, you know, we uh, we we come to this. Uh, one of the reasons people come to this show is to watch you mess up the intro. Yeah, it's like in every <laughs> every, and I'm so like it's not that I'm nervous about it. It's like okay, come on, this time you're gonna do it properly, and then I screw up. <laughs> I think I'm focusing. I'm thinking too much about it. I think is the problem. Right. Yikes. All right. Well. uh Steven, how the heck have you been? I'm all right. Uh, you know, just uh, <laughs> as you can see, my home is a mess. Uh, but uh, so is mine. Yeah. Otherwise, all right. Just been busy and yours too, huh? Stuff everywhere. Yeah. Toys and Skylanders and old computers. This way. <laughs> Everything carefully set up so that it shows up in camera. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Ugh. When I picture that room, it's like utterly barren, like not even paint on the walls, <laughs> just six inches outside of that frame. See, like, this, you think this is real stuff. This is actually just a, a photo that I got blown up. <laughs> sure. So it's a big screen. It. Yeah, it's, it's all a it screen. Is. You sit down, you pull it down. See, this is what I'm green screening behind me. Is, is right. This thing. Yeah, that's what it is. I just found some random thing off of eBay, someone selling something, and I just put it up right. behind me. It's someone who actually has a cool game collection. <laughs> exactly. I don't actually play video games. This is all a big lie. Thanks for outing <laughs> me, Steven. It's out. It's finally out. Everybody knows. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Well, let's get into uh, the show. I uh, just want to remind everybody uh, that we do have a YouTube channel. Check it out at youtube.com slash VGPod. Putting up all of these episodes um, shortly after they are recorded, um, available right on YouTube which is uh, great for the people that can't join us live uh, when we do this each and every week at vgpodcast.com slash live. Um, so it allows you guys to come and check it out and see what you like and leave comments and thumbs it up and, and subscribe. If, if you could watch a video or 12 and thumbs it up and then subscribe and, and, uh, and do that, that would be awesome. Uh, the more people that do that uh, means the more people that see it, which means the more people that will view it, which will be the more people that will thumbs it up, which will be the more people will see it. It's just like this big cyclical thing. And it just starts with a couple likes and, and thumbs uh, from the listeners. So hopefully you guys uh, enjoy um, the YouTube channel. I've been getting a, a fair bit of, of um, comments from people that are uh, liking the fact that they can uh, and watch the videos. And they can even do it on their Wii U um, or their Apple TV or their Roku box, um, which is pretty awesome as well. So Anywhere. Anywhere. It's available worldwide. You can watch it on your iPad. One of these things. That works as well. They could do it in camera four on your setup there. Camera four. Oh, no, that's not right. <laughs> that's the wrong <laughs> camera four. Actually, no, it's the right <laughs> camera four. I just didn't have it set up there. Um, but okay. yeah, they could they could do that as well. Um, mm-hmm. I could go youtube.com slash VGPod and whoop, boom, camera four. And there we go. You can see right. all the stuff that is there, including the TOG number 149. And bonus stage, our Grand Theft Auto 5 special that we did uh, is really great as well. Um, I'm not going to actually play it because I don't want to ah, stop it. I didn't mean to click through on it, but I guess I did. Um, but yeah, it's... Oh, uh, cucumbers, man. <laughs> don't, don't, aren't you hungry now? I'm, I'm GTA, starving. Cucumber City. I'm, yeah, that's what it is. It's, it's all I do in Grand Theft Auto 5 is I, I garden. I uh, garden <laughs> nice big cucumbers. I wouldn't be surprised if it was an option. <laughs> Uh, yeah. All right. Well, let's get into uh, the show. Uh, so, Stephen, uh, what the heck have you been playing recently? I spent a lot of time this week playing Rayman Legends on Wii U. Um, 
which was cool. It's a lot of fun. I really like that game a lot. Um, I finished the first world, and I'm at the last stage of two of the other ones because you can do the stuff in any order you want. It's really, really cool. Um, and Animal Crossing New Leaf uh, on 3DS, you may have heard of that. I, I, don't, I don't think so. It doesn't, doesn't ring yeah. a bell. Yeah. Um, I uh, are, are, still, do you, do you still play crossing guard? That. Do you play crossing guard that is an animal? Yes. And you're, uh, you're letting animals across the street? And yes, you, it's you a lose. puzzle game. Okay. Uh, it's a match three puzzle game uh, where you are a little guy standing on the side of the road hmm. and animals are crossing the street and you have to slide them. You match three and then they disappear and they cross the nice. road. Nice. I don't know. Yeah, it's, that ran sounds, out of ideas. Sounds like a fun game. I, I should mm-hmm. go pick that one up. Yeah, you probably should. Um, have you been playing your copy of New Leaf at all? Or? Uh, no. Oh, man. I have you not. stink, man. Yeah, I, 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 it's to the point where it's like I don't want to go. But I went in once to mm-hmm. turn on the uh, Keep My City Beautiful, uh, and then I haven't played again. So yeah. yeah, I still play pretty much every day. Very, very rarely I'll miss one. I'm trying to get the... Um, <laughs> The Gracie visit, so that I can try oh, and yeah. pass the the fashion checks and get the new store. <laughs> that that was funny, actually. The the not to interrupt you, but I'm sorry. Um, oh, but sorry. the uh, the first time that I went in, um, I ran around my city just to see if anything was on fire, if there was like lava raining down from the skies. Um, and it turns out that Gracie was there, and she mm-hmm. wanted me in a modern outfit. And I'm like, oh crap, I don't have anything modern. In my yeah, good store. luck. And then That's all the tough one, and all the stores were closed. That's like, oh, yeah. Damn it. Damn it. Yeah. Damn you, Gracie. Damn. Yeah, I, she only showed up once in my town so far, too. And uh, I couldn't pass the the sporty. She wanted sporty. Oh, that's so and, easy. Uh, I have about I a thousand sporty big. things. There's um the ones that I had problems with. Something were else modern, that I didn't have enough. Which has nothing. Mm-hmm. And um, historic was tough as well. I had to put yeah. together a suit of armor to go talk to her. And, yeah. and then that worked. Yeah, I think it was modern. I think it may have been modern because yeah, it was something where one. I didn't have, uh, I didn't have what I needed. <clears throat> the odd thing about, about modern is half the stuff that Gracie gives you as prizes are all modern. Yeah. So it's like, well, if I haven't, it, if I haven't seen you, actually, I think that's the first one I did was modern because I got a Gracie T-shirt and it's like, oh, this is going to do me absolutely nothing for the rest of them because I've already done the modern. Uh, well, yeah. I can't remember which. I think it was normal was the one that I had. Or mm-hmm. something like that. It was it was one that I didn't have anything um, stored up in my in my house anyway, um, and then all the stores were closed, and then I hit, hit a fit of depression, and then turned the game off. Yeah, and that's that's uh, that's too bad. That's Animal Crossing. Yeah, and uh, just earlier today, um, Julia was was um, playing it on her 3ds. She she opens up her 3ds. She starts it up. She plays it for about five minutes, and then she goes, "Daddy, I'm tired of playing this game." And I'm like, "Honey." <laughs> Nobody's telling you you have to play this game. We have so many other <laughs> games for you to play. You don't have to play that one. But She's like, people. Okay. And then she did a save and exit and she closed it. And I'm like, Well, she hit her she hit her limit on Animal Crossing, it sounds like. You know, wow. she's she's had enough. She goes, I'm just I'm tired of doing the same thing every day. And I'm like, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you don't you don't have to do it, but uh, right. yeah. I, I get that. That's how I feel too. It's like I, I want to do it, but I don't want to do. It. But I want to do it, but yeah. I don't want to do. It. I usually reach a point where in Animal Crossing where that happens, where um, it, I'll start to struggle internally between this is boring and this is my job. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's yeah. like I have to do this, and it's like I don't want to do this, <laughs> but I have to do this because this is what I do every day. <clears throat> And that's and I usually will eventually reach that in in just a couple of months in Animal Crossing, and and this game has kept me engaged to play every day, way longer, hmm. and um, now I'm I'm now in Animal Crossing. I should have mentioned this right away. I'm I'm trying to wipe out all the villagers in my town, get rid of all of them, <laughs> die, and, die, 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 <laughs> <laughs> and replace them all with bears because I want everyone oh. in my town to be a bear. And I'm dressed in the bear costume, so it's going to be a town of bears. <laughs> oh, Stephen. <laughs> and it's been very difficult because I'm, I'm able to get animals to move out because I watched this video online that teaches you how to make animals move out pretty quickly. I hit them with shovels and... Nope. Um, I know. 
None of that stuff has any impact. Really? Or at least it doesn't have nearly as much of an impact as just ignoring them. If you mm-hmm. never speak to them, never interact with them, never hit them with something at all, they can leave in as little as a week. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. I, I don't talk to any of my yeah. people for about a month now, so they're, they're yeah. probably all wanting I think to you leave. have to visit. I think you have to visit every day, though. <clears throat> you know oh, what okay. I mean? Like you have to yeah. actually sure. come into the game but not talk to anyone. Just ignore them. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So I've had several people who have moved out already or animals that have moved out already and they've been replaced by other animals, but none of them have been bears yet. Um, I once had a bear in my town, Tammy, but she moved out. Uh, <laughs> and that was before I had decided to have all different bears. I just got sick of her because I couldn't stand her catchphrase and it never asked me to change it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So now she's in Julia's town and she, and there's no way to make her come back. So Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I, GTA five, man, that's, uh, that's been taking up all my gaming time. So mm-hmm. I haven't, uh, I haven't basically touched anything else. So, uh, unfortunately animal crossing is probably now a barren wasteland. Um, but that's, but that's <laughs> okay. I can always build it up again if I want. Sure. Cool. So that's what you've been playing. That's it. Awesome. Well, I am, um, I am playing Grand Theft Auto V, and that is essentially it, and not on a Nintendo platform, so I won't really talk about it at all in, um, in in this podcast, but it is very good. I am very, very much enjoying it. I am doing lots of awesome things, and if you want to hear more about it, check out the bonus stage special that we did uh, last Friday called Grand Theft Auto V Special. Easy to find on vgpodcast.com or over at our YouTube channel, and uh, spoilers, it's good I'm so glad that you did that separate podcast because I could not care less about Grand Theft Auto. Oh, it, is, <laughs> it is so, so good. The, all the stuff you can do in this game, the the detail of everything, it's um, it's pretty amazing. And I'm getting close to finishing the main campaign. I think I have about 10 or 15 missions left to go um, in the main campaign. So I've been kind of stretching it out, doing other things. Um, but uh, I've been following some stuff online now about um, some conspiracy things that are happening in the game. So you have to beat the game 100% and do all this other stuff. And it makes these things appear. And there's a big big mystery about what these things are and if they unlock more content. So I've been reading up on all that stuff now. And it's like, holy crap, this is a game within a game. This is the best thing ever. <laughs> and then next week, Grand Theft Auto Online launches. So it's just going to be... It's going to be Grand Theft Auto all the time. It's uh, it's pretty pretty ridiculous. But if you want to hear more, Grand Theft Auto Five Special on VGPodcast.com. And that's it. That's, that's it. Cool. That's all. It's been uh, my all encompassing game, which is uh, which is good to have every once in a while. Oh yeah. All right. Well, uh, let's move on. Let's take a small break before we get into the rest of the show. Uh, I want to tell you guys about uh, one of my favorite websites on the planet, Audible.com. If you check out AudiblePodcast.com. A slash Nintendo Pulse, you can see the page I'm looking at. And what Audible is, is it's a um, it's a website that allows you to sign up and choose from over 150,000 audiobooks on their website. Um, and you get to download them. You get X number of credits a month, and those credits turn into books that you read with your ears. Um, it sounds weird, but it's true, and it works. And I, I've been a huge fan of Audible for a very, very long time. So I uh, just want to tell you guys about something that maybe you'll enjoy. It's called Robocalypse, a novel. Um, and it's by Daniel H. Wilson, narrated by Mike Chamberlain. And uh, it is essentially a book um, about technology and about a massively powerful artificial intelligence um, called Arcos that comes um, basically to take over all the computers in the world. So very Terminator-esque. And um, from what I've heard uh, so far, it is a very, very good book. Um, I haven't finished it, but it is a good read so far. Um, and you can see on the page, if you're watching the video, it's uh, 31 50 to buy this book on audible.com if you want to buy it flat out. Or if you go to audiblepodcast.com slash VGPod, or sorry, audiblepodcast.com slash Nintendo Pulse, you can actually get it for free um, through our um, our deal that we have with Audible. So if you want it, if there's any book you want, um, you can listen to it, and Audible has it with over 150,000 titles from virtually every genre. You're going to find what you're looking for at audible.com. So you can get a free book, like I said, and a 30-day free trial by signing up at audiblepodcast.com slash Nintendo Pulse. That is audiblepodcast.com 
forward slash Nintendo Pulse, one word, and you can get one book for free and then a free 30 day trial to check out the rest of the awesome that is Audible. So uh, check it out, audiblepodcast.com slash Nintendo Pulse. And thanks to Audible for supporting the podcast network this month. Uh, really appreciate it and uh, I really love the service. So uh, hopefully a lot of you listeners um, had a chance to check it out and take advantage of this offer. Best part? The book is yours to keep for the rest of your life, uh, whether you sign up for a month or for no no days, or if you're a member for five years, you get to keep the book forever, which is a pretty awesome thing. So thanks again to Audible for your support. Cool. All right, Stephen, let's get into the meat of the show. We have a uh, an email <clears throat> um, basically from last week. Um, I guess a little bit of a of a listener feedback. It's from John, and it goes, uh, thanks for the show. I really appreciate it. And I just thought I would mention that Wii Sports Club will use Motion Plus, and that makes me far more interested, And uh, which is which is true because uh, Wii Sports Resort used Motion Plus, and it was pretty awesome. And now all the Wii sports games will now be uh, modified to use Motion Plus, which is pretty cool. Bowling was already pretty awesome. I can just imagine the, the weird types of spin and stuff you can put on it with that. And tennis mm-hmm. would be really awesome as well um he continues uh i really liked we fit plus uh, i use we fit plus plus traditional exercise to lose 50 pounds about a year ago and i've kept it off the skateboarding was awesome uh, the half pipe tricks and grinding i'm not a skateboarder but in the game it gives me a chance to experience it plus the added exercise is awesome um so thanks again for the show so this is referencing we were talking about the the new we sports club and uh, the new uh, Wii U, Wii Fit U, uh, which essentially is going to be a free download for a month. And if you want to keep it at the end of that month, you just buy that little $20 pedometer and then you get to keep the game and, and play it that way. So um, for John, uh, Wii Fit helped him lose 50 pounds. And I've heard this all over. There's been a lot of people I know um, or have talked to online or have read stories about that have lost 20 pounds, 50 pounds, 100 pounds. Um, this is this game has really worked for a lot of people. So um, I, I it's I guess it's a really good thing that Nintendo would put something like this out and keep iterating it and keep adding stuff to it and and not just trying to use it as a cash grab like selling it to people for twenty dollars is a pretty damn good price. Um, so yeah, um, thanks uh, John for sending that email and congratulations for uh, for making Wii Fit work for you. That's pretty awesome. It definitely is. All right, Stephen, let's get into the news, man. Okay. <laughs> let's. Get- <laughs> Oh, thanks for agreeing with me. Uh, <laughs> let's, kick, let's kick it off. Um, and that is um, that uh, the new uh, Pokemon 3DS XLs have been released. They're available in stores right now. And huh. you can go buy one if you choose. Um, a couple of the people that I follow on Twitter have already um, already switched over to it. There's a picture of them right there. Really nice looking. Um really kind of cool um the blue one looks really awesome the red one eh, it's okay um but uh they're available right now for 199 smackers um and go go buy one as soon as you can because if you're looking forward to picking one of these up these special edition ones sell out really really quick um they're usually gone within about a month. You can't really find them in stores, except if you hit like a an odd store that maybe keeps their stuff around for a little bit longer. Um, yeah. But yeah, if you're if you're really wanting one of these Pokemon X or Pokemon Y um, 3DS XL special editions, now would be the time to go pick one up for one ninety nine um, because they won't last in stores uh, for very very long. Yeah, the Animal Crossing one was gone before it even came out. Oh yeah, it was the all the pre orders sold out um, before it hit. And oh, this is my special edition DSI. Oh, nice! <laughs> I, I did. Where'd you get that one from? I, I bought it from a local game store. Oh, did that one came out in the U.S.? Mm-hmm. Yeah, more. this was the Super Mario Brothers 25th anniversary one. I oh, think it came right. with um, uh, with Mario Kart. Right. I remember I that one. Seven. Let me see if I can get clear enough where it'll read the text. But the surface is so yeah, yeah. shiny. Tw- 25th anniversary. I can see it right yeah. on the screen. Yeah, that's here. I'll make it even bigger. Oh. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, it's just a, a beautiful, beautiful system. No scratches on it or anything. Super and, shiny, man. Oh, yeah. Really nice. Yeah, I I, I really like these special editions. They they really uh, do it well. Um, and it's nice that we're actually getting some over here. Like it was, mm-hmm. it was getting, it was getting laughable. Um, all the ones that were coming out in Japan, like every month they'd have a new special edition one. And then you'd look on like um, any of the, the Japanese import shops and to get one 
um, and have it imported, it would be like four hundred dollars. And it's like, no, I'm not <laughs> going to do that. It's yeah. it's region locked anyway, so that wouldn't do me any good. But um, but that one looks really really nice. So um, I've seen an unboxing of the blue one. Um, um, that one of my Twitter followers and the guy, a guy that I follow on Twitter put up uh, the day before it came out. He got his a day early and it looks really nice. Like it looks as shiny as that one um, with some really nice art. If I didn't already have an Excel, I would pick one of these up, even though I'm not a big Pokemon fan. They, they just look really, really nice. So, yeah. So they're out in stores now. Go pick one up if you want one because they won't be in stores for very, very long. Yeah. I, I was thinking about ordering one of the um, not the Pokemon ones, but one of the other special edition XLs from Japan. Right. So that I can play Dragon Quest uh, Seven. Oh right! But I'm I'm <laughs> I'm still holding out hope that they will localize it. That is a big expenditure to play one game. It is. Yeah. But that's me with Dragon Quest. <laughs> so. Yeah, I hear it. I I have games like that as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, moving on. Um, news out of Japan this week is that uh, the 3DS has trumped the lifetime sales of the Wii in Japan. Which is, which is crazy. How, how crazy is that? That's, that is very crazy. That, that My first reaction to that is, there's no way the Wii sold that poorly yeah. in Japan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then I thought about it, and I'm like, you know what? It actually is, pl- it is plausible, because yep. Japan's a lot smaller yep. than the U.S. Yeah, true. But, um, but yeah, like, uh, so the, the figures from MediaCrate... Um, show that the 3DS has sold uh, 12,752,731 oh, in Japan. <laughs> um, the Wii has only sold 12,698,878. Wow. So, um, yeah, from uh, about 50, 55K more 3DSs than Wiis were sold in Japan. And these um, are both still <laughs> living, breathing platforms because yeah. the Wii over there is still outselling Wii U, just like it is here. Yeah. Yeah, it's so. it's bizarre. It's uh, really kind of bizarre how well the 3DS is selling. Um, so it's not bizarre that it's selling. It's bizarre that it's to to this point already, considering yeah. how slow of a start it had. Um, I yeah. mean, it, when you look at the sales of the 3DS compared to the DS, they're mm-hmm. still like one or two million behind in the in in the. Um, I, I guess the the sales arc, if you plot it out on a graph. Um, so it's slow. But it's still selling pretty damn good and well enough to um, to beat out the Wii. Um, and I guess there, there's some good explanations for it. A household will have one Wii, um, but a household could have multiple 3DSs if you have multiple kids or multiple adults. Um, so it really makes sense why that would happen. But a 3DS hasn't been out for that long. Um, yeah, I've bought three of them myself. It's, it's all you, Stephen. Yeah, you put it. You put them over the edge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh <laughs> but yeah it's uh i don't know it's pretty amazing um so congratulations nintendo for uh selling one hand one hell of a good handheld uh, all the handhelds you put out have been oh, yeah. pretty pretty good um except for the virtual boy but that's not a handheld because you had to put it on a desk so it's more of a table held i guess <laughs> um but uh but yeah congratulations for selling uh a, a metric ton of uh, 3ds's in japan good stuff All right, moving on. Uh, This is an interesting quote uh, this week, uh, which um, it it was just kind of one of those like backhanded compliments. It's like you're you're rubbing the guy, you're patting the guy on the back and then stabbing him at the same time. And it was from EA's uh, Richard uh, Hillman. And he was basically talking about Miyamoto. And the quote, I'll read it out to you, is uh, I thank Miyamoto for his industry input, but he's falling down on the job. And for the past five years, that job has been taken over by the dead guy from Cupertino. We ask for too much time, too much skill, and too much money, sometimes all at once. Customers today are generally looking for a single fabric of play. They want their game where they want it and and when they want it and at a price they can defend to other people. Mm -hmm. So not only did they um, insult Miyamoto... They're kind of um, invoking the name of the dead Steve Jobs to make their yeah. point as well, which is really kind of crazy. So, um, yeah, so it's this guy, Richard Hillman, um, basically coming out and saying that, sure enough, um, Nintendo's sleeping on the job and they should do better. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Once I get your butt on a couch, I can get two hours for sure. That granularity means that I cannot build the same game on every platform. I cannot build Battlefield on every platform. So he just keeps going more and more and more about how consumers are basically lemmings, uh, essentially. Like when you read this article, it just 
it, yeah. it, it doesn't it's it's not it doesn't come from a good place. Um, and and you, you're sure that EAPR is reading it and just kind of doing the face palm. It's like, oh, God, sure. We're Absolutely. Send out so many apologies now. Thanks, Richard. Or should we call <laughs> you by your short name? Yeah. Um, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was thinking about um, electronic arts the other day and how, you know, they they're kind of falling down on the job. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Electronic Arts, they're not really putting out any games that um, that I want to own, right? So yeah. that's really what their job is, to make games that make me happy, yeah. right? And so and them, since they're not doing that... Well, yeah, exactly. And them being a third party, they can make games for everything. So of course, yeah. yeah. They, can, they can talk about making stuff for the iPhone mm -hmm. because they do. And they know yeah. that Nintendo can't because Nintendo makes their own hardware. I mean, just like Microsoft wouldn't release games on iOS because they have Windows Phone. They've yeah. released some apps, but I, I don't think that Halo game will ever make it over to the iPad because they want people to buy Windows Phone 7 and Microsoft Surface tablets. Mm -hmm. um, just like Sony will never release games for the iPhone. They released the Sony Play Store uh, or whatever that app was called only in Japan, which allows you to browse like the PlayStation Network and um, connect um, wirelessly to control some games games and some other weird stuff but they won't release like i don't know kill zone <laughs> on on your ipad i mean that'll just never right. happen um Qu quacko in the chat room saying but patapon is on the app store and yeah i don't even know how that is still there some weird chinese knockoff patapon and it hasn't been taken down after about four weeks i, wow. I don't i don't understand that mm -hmm. but yeah i mean it's 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 all nice and good for ea to come out and say stuff like that but it really doesn't mean anything um because yeah. it, they're just kind of poking the bear really and why would you why would you piss off one of your main major like platform holders like you want to make games for them you want them to, to give you access to stuff yet you're stabbing one of the most beloved gaming personalities ever in the back i don't know it just mm -hmm. seems like a really odd quote yeah i, I mean I, I think what he's what he's trying to say is that the industry is changing and that you know mm -hmm. That that what that Nintendo is in a in a really precarious position. I sure. think that maybe a lot of people are looking at the Wii U. And they're looking at the fact that it's not selling very well or hasn't been selling very well, and they're looking at the fact that it's got a big touch screen, and you know, yeah, maybe they're thinking, okay, well, Nintendo should be competing in this space then, which means they should be putting their stuff on the App Store or whatever. And it's like that that doesn't really work. I mean, as soon as Nintendo starts doing something like that, their platforms die. The quality of their software goes through the floor. Mm -hmm. They have to start charging ninety nine cents because it's all garbage. Right, and then there's no more Nintendo. You know what I mean? Yep. It's Nintendo stops meaning, you know, what it does to those of us who like sure. Nintendo. You know, maybe it means nothing to the to the Sony fanboys or the Xbox, mm -hmm. but the Nintendo name means a lot to us. Even if not every game they make is great, it's the quality that's there. It's what keeps us spending thirty, forty, fifty, sixty dollars or more. <clears throat> Yeah. on their software yeah, because exactly. to us it's worth it yeah totally yeah it just i i'm not gonna say it's never gonna happen um because who right. knows you can't predict the future it probably will happen at one point where nintendo will realize that there is no um living room market anymore because mm -hmm. this is say 10 years out there's yeah. no consoles that will really exist in the living room and and handhelds aren't selling anymore um then they'll make that move but they're still selling millions of 3ds's oh so, yeah I mean, why would they? They're get out still of the profitable. Game? Yeah, I mean, they're yeah. making money. Their shareholders are happy. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really all that matters when you own a company. So, sure. um, might happen at one point. Won't happen for a little while. So people can just shut up about it. <laughs> it is kind of getting old reading that stuff. Well, it's yeah, and it's not like we've. It's not like this is the first time we've seen you know somebody telling saying that Nintendo needs to start making software for other platforms. I mean, how many generations have they been saying that for? Mm-hmm. Yeah. N64, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They, they've been doing it since then, and Nintendo has profited on every platform. Yep. Even when the Wii was a runaway, ridiculous, stupid success mm -hmm. that, e that we as Nintendo people didn't even so much like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The fact that they made people money were on, still the, saying it. On, on the GameCube just shows how good, um, how, how, how well Nintendo can run a company. The GameCube yeah. was a horrible seller. Um, but it still sold enough to make Nintendo enough money to fund other development. So yeah, well, I mean, it outsold the the Xbox. That's true. Um, That's true, but not by much. That's true. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, Nintendo's fine. Just just let them let them yeah. let them play in their own sandbox. They're having oh, fun. Yeah. Don't uh, don't spoil them. Let them eat their popsicles. Yeah. And... yeah. I mean, if the if the 3ds was selling as poorly as as Wii U, then you know I yeah. I could understand a little bit more of this negativity. But yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right, moving on. Um, next story is another. I'm jealous, incredibly jealous. Oh gosh, story. yeah. And this mm. is um, this this is Club Nintendo. So Club Nintendo, we just we talked about it a couple episodes ago. We had that question from one of our listeners saying, "Is Club Nintendo terrible? Should they step up the game?" And we're like, "Ah, oh, it's free. What are you gonna do? Can't complain too much." And then you see a story like this, where in Nintendo uh, Nintendo Club Club Nintendo Europe. Um, you can actually get little physical statues. Um, I'm showing a picture of them on the screen right now if you're watching the video. Um, and this is the second set of these trophies. They're like these little trophy statues. So you can get a lightning trophy, a shell trophy, a banana, or a mushroom trophy with the stars that you get. Um, we get coins in North America. In, in Europe, they get stars. And you can trade in your stars for this little piece of, I don't know, kitsch that you can put on your shelf. They look so awesome. I mean, they're small. They're probably the size of like an, an old film canister, maybe a little bit bigger. Like, you know, those those like 35 millimeter film things are about that big, I think, if I remember correctly what the last ones were like. But they just look awesome. Like the the lightning one has you can see where it's um, it, it has some some like resin. It looks like crystal with lightning in it. These just look so good. And every time I see stuff like this, it makes me so jealous of other Nintendo or Club Nintendo markets. They yeah. get all the good stuff for some reason. <laughs> we, <laughs> not so much. Um, it's, uh, yeah, that, that, not so good. <laughs> I don't know. Would, would you pick these up if they were available, Stephen? Oh, in a heartbeat. Yeah, they look really good. Yeah, I finally got the shipment notification for my Pikmin uh, tote bag. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got like mine yesterday or this morning or something. I should have brought mine down so I could show it on the camera. I got mine a little while ago um, mm-hmm. and it's yeah, it's nice. I'll never use it, but it's it's a nice thing. <laughs> and I'm I'm kind of happy that I have it sort of. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, it's um, I wish I wish they did more here in North America. Yeah. Yep. All right. Moving on to our next story. Let's let's head back to Japan. Um, And this is a story that Nintendo has announced four new bundles in Japan. They're called the um, Play Immediately Family Bundles. Um, That must be a (laughs) translation error. (laughs) And uh, there's four of them. Um, There's the there's white and black. They're still selling white in Japan. And one comes with um, with uh, We Party You. And 30 days of a karaoke service. Uh, another one comes with uh, New Super Mario Brothers U, We Party U, 30 days of karaoke uh, service, and a fit meter <laughs> if you want to get your Wii Fit U. And um, and and there's one available of, of each of those in black and white. Um, so these really weird things like karaoke and I don't know, just bizarre. Um, but there are pretty good prices. Um, they're about the same price as what you would be getting a deluxe set for already in Japan. And they come with two games and a karaoke um, service voucher so you can play that. And then the one that's a little bit more expensive is the one that comes with the fit meter um, and a Wiimote. Um, oh, these both come with Wiimotes. Sorry, these both come with Wiimotes as well. Um, wow. at, at, they come with a Wiimote on top of your normal uh, gamepad. So these are some pretty crazy huge bundles and maybe um, maybe a sign of things to come after the Zelda bundle has been out in stores for a little while. Maybe this will be like the holiday bundle. They'll have the Wii Fit U bundle, which will have New Super Mario Brothers, Wii Fit U preloaded or vouchers, I guess, um, Wii pads, um, steppers, all that fun stuff and uh, bundle it all together for the two ninety nine price, which uh, would be pretty good it would sell pretty well in north america i would think that is cool yeah so more cool stuff out of japan that we don't have access to i guess we have access to we can import it um i don't know why i'd want a japanese karaoke service 30 days of it um but uh, i guess <laughs> i could import it if i really really wanted to yeah <laughs> i don't know why i would do that I don't anyway. know why you would either. <laughs> um, so Nintendo is not concerned with the sales of their Wii U and what their future Wii U sales are. Um, there was um, an article over at uh, MCV uh, from MCVUK.com. Um, there's an interview with um, 
with Nintendo. And um, they're basically saying that they're not concerned with the sales of the Wii U. They're not concerned uh, at what the sales are going to be because um, we have The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD. And Ocarina of Time basically made the 3DS sell. So we've done it already once. We're going to do it again with um, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD. Yep. So that sure that makes sense. They've already um, they've already done it once. Um, they can do it again. Um, the difference this time is Ocarina of Time. If correct me if I'm wrong, but Ocarina of Time came out after the price drop, did it not? I think it came out before. Oh, I, out I don't before? think Ocarina of Time was too far after launch mm. but the price drop was like 90 days after launch it would have been around the same time i guess i think if i had to guess i don't think ocarina of time was the big um the big driver for people to, to to go out and get a 3ds i think it's more um the the, the fact that it was 80 dollars cheaper was the the big thing for people the fact that they could get it for 179 instead of 250 was a huge thing um, yeah. More so than the fact that Ocarina of Time was available. It sold well okay. because people wanted have stuff the, to play. I have the launch date. A North American launch date for Ocarina of Time 3D on 3DS was the 19th of June, 2011. And the 3DS came out in 2010, didn't it? Let me see here. Um, Let's see for the 3DS Nintendo 3DS. Price drop. Um, and it was, what was it called? What was the big program you got an ambassador right the ambassador program yes. nintendo 3ds let's do a quick Google u.s search. launch date 3ds ambassador program september 2nd 20 what that's not right that's a new article about it i want to find the actual one nintendo um, 3ds was first released on february 26th 2011 less than six months later on july 28th 2011 nintendo announced a significant price reduction from 250 to 170 right and then the actual, they announced it in July. It actually happened a month later in August. When did Ocarina come out? June? Uh, June, it says. Okay, so they announced the price drop about a month after Ocarina came out. And then the yeah. price drop was an, was an hour, or um, an hour, a month after that. So, yeah, I, I mean, I guess, I guess that was part of it. So the price yeah. dropped. People bought it, bought Ocarina time because there wasn't very many good games to play um, when, that, when that launch happened. And um, that was the driver. I, I have, I have problems believing that it was the fact that Ocarina was available that caused the 3DS to sell. Um, that said, I really hope the fact that Wind Waker is out is selling a lot of Wii U's. I'm really curious to see what the NPDs are. Um, yeah. To see how many of those units are sold, or a press release from Nintendo saying we moved a hundred thousand of these, or five hundred thousand of these, or a million of these. Um, Some. <laughs> as long as it's more, if it's more than 14,000, I'll be happy because that seems yeah. to be the number that they sell every month. Um, if if it's 100,000, I'd, I'd be okay. If it's 250 or 500, I'd be like, crap, okay, that's good. There's going to be some Wii U's out there. People are going to start making games for it. My $300 investment or $350 investment plus accessories, $500 investment might actually pay for itself um, in gaming fun. Um, but the way it is right now, it's like, okay, this is going to be my Nintendo box for the next uh, 10 years or six years or however long it takes for Nintendo to make another console. Yeah. So, yeah, um, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is good on Nintendo for coming up with excuses. Um, I don't really know if that is entirely accurate. <laughs> we'll see how it plays out. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Uh, moving on. Um, this is one that you put in the show notes, Stephen, and that is yes. Bravely Default's first English appearance. Um, the, the gameplay trailer was released um, this week. Today, I believe. Today. And yeah. um, do, should I play some of it? Uh, you can you can if you want to. Um, just do you want to give me a hand signal when it's done so I can unmute? Oh, okay, you want to <laughs> you, you don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear it. Are you sure? Oh should I, God! Should it's I force ear people? bleeding. I, I'm gonna play it because yeah. I had to listen to it once. So now everybody has to listen yeah. to it once. And Let's it's it. it sounds really good. Like when you first started out, it's like, oh, and it's a beautiful looking Square game. Square Enix and Nintendo presents. Okay, oh, candles. This is beautiful. This is looking good. It's like, this is nice. Oh. This woman should put clothes on. Okay, she's getting dressed. That's fine. She's being dressed by nuns, it looks like. So that's good. Takes the curse off it. Your Highness is so very kind. Ouch. Um, 
but my plan is to leave for the village straight away. What? What? What is that? Did Stephen? Are you doing that? Uh, no. Fire. Water, it does say immediately, wind, which I find hilarious. Did you see the text right underneath it? Issues between English or Japanese audio. Immediately, <laughs> it tells you right there. Choose or two. You, you don't have to listen to this crap. We, we know it sucks. We're sorry. We we had a we had a small budget. We couldn't really uh, do anything about it. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I I'll stop it there. I don't want any more voice to come on. It How looks hor- so cool like, though. It looks so good. The game and, looks the game looks amazing. Like you can tell yeah. from from there. Like this the overworld 3D guy running on an overworld and it looks really great. Yeah. Um, the battles look cool. The battles look amazing. But uh um Highness, I I think you could uh and and the recording, it sounds like it's like um it would, they recorded it and it was too hot of a signal. So it sounds uh-huh. almost like it's peaking the microphone a little bit. So it's yeah. like you couldn't even record it properly to sound like never mind the guy's horrible voice. You couldn't even make it sound good with the way you record it. Oh, it's just yeah. that's one big hot mess, man. Um, I I kind of like it. Uh, the look of it. Like mm-hmm. here, here's a little bit. Suppose more. I have much choice. I'll join you. <laughs> I suppose I don't have much choice. I'll join you, but uh, but yeah, I mean, it, the, the battle its stuff looks really good. It's all three D and awesome looking. Yeah, the music sounds epic, but um, yeah, the voice acting, dude. Could they hire me? I could do the voice for it and not sound like a uh, like an out of breath twelve year old kid that just ran a marathon. Like, that, how cool would it be to like <laughs> to have a, a a part in in one of these games? That would be really sweet. I would um I would stop podcasting. Mm-hmm. That would be like my crown jewel. I wouldn't be able to best it, so I'd have to say yeah. I'll have to hang up the microphone. That would be drop all. the mic, so to speak. That's it. That's it. Mm-hmm. I will I will exit on a high note. But yeah, that would mm-hmm. be really sweet. Um, and I think I could do as good a job, if not better. I'm, right. not, I'm not bragging, but I think I can do as good as that. I think yeah. multiple takes right from your home office, <laughs> yeah. whatever it takes to produce a good audio, you string yeah. it together for them. Yeah, I, I think, I think, I, I think I can do that. Nintendo, call me up. We'll, we'll, mm-hmm. uh, we'll, we'll try it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, moving on. Um, I guess uh, this isn't big news. It's kind of a duh kind of thing. Um, and that is, oops, that's not the right right camera um and that is the fact that uh toon link is going to be coming to smash brothers toon link look at him he's all toony um yeah he, he's he's the new toon link too. He's, yeah he's not, that's right yeah he's not super flat not the looking. one from 10 years ago yeah yeah like the um the last time toon link was was in smash brothers he looked kind of flat almost mm-hmm. and this is more of a 3d guy with big eyes um yep. so looks really good but it's like, yeah, that's going to happen. Like, we know all these characters. Can you tell us some new characters that maybe are surprising that aren't Mega Man and the Wii Fit Trainer and, and the, the Animal Crossing Villager? Because we know those ones. Give us some more surprises. We want to be surprised. Please. Sure. Um, but yeah, Toon, Toon Link, if you're worried, um, Toon Link is is in it. And uh, he joins the roster. He's now on, on, on the website. Right at the top, Toon Link is there. Yep. And and there's some screenshots so you can see uh Princess Peach is putting something in Toon Link's hair and he's going, Oh <laughs> my my favorite is the second one from the left on the bottom. Where he's firing an arrow? Nope. From the left. Oh, from the left. The, the, the other, other left. left sorry. I was <laughs> Wow. The Peach American Peach left, not some, Canadian left. <laughs> Princess Peach has some major gas going on. Yeah. Just look at her yeah. face. Oh my goodness. That's remarkable right there. Wow. I think that's hilarious. That is And uh Mario seems to like it. But I guess like, they've I'm... been together long enough where Yeah. Yeah. It's just kind of the way it works. There was a screenshot that came out this week, which I don't have have up on the screen, where it shows um uh, Mario essentially touching her hand and she has a ring on her hand and the comment on on um on uh, Twitter was, oh, there's a ring there. What could that mean? Or something along those lines. It's like, what? Are they getting married? Is this like a, a silent announcement? Or is it just like this funny thing that's happening? Like, what? It's, it's probably just a little a little joke that they didn't think anybody would take seriously. Yeah, totally. And I was just like, what? Is this and we're like, oh my gosh. Yeah, totally. Mario yeah. and Peach got married. It's like, <laughs> they're not real. 
<laughs> they're not real people. They're they not real people. Uh, don't you they don't have to it. you don't have to make plans to go to the wedding. It's not yes. really going to happen. And if it is, it's it's people in big suits. I, I'm going to spoil this for you, people there at home. If you see Mario walking around, it's not real. It's a guy in a suit or a girl in a suit. <laughs> Stop Either ruining or. everyone's dream. I know. I'm I'm basically ruining Christmas for some people, but it's just it's just Mario. It's just a guy in a suit. It's not the real Mario. He he's on the television. If you wanna if you wanna play him, you wanna play out his his adventures. It's on a TV. Besides I know we, chat room. Chat room. Don't cry. Don't. Besides, we know that's not how that's that's turning out. <laughs> oh, here's uh, Stephen. Steve. Oh, thanks, Stephen. Huh? Link Mary's Princess Peach. Does it have a link to the? No, it doesn't have a link to it. Oh, this is from this is an old one. Um, yeah, I thought maybe it was a link to that screenshot, but yeah. No, it's no, not, this is uh, a, someone drawing someone made it in 07 or something. <laughs> Crazy. <sighs> All right, uh, let's move on from that. Um, if we can even move on from that, I mean, can, can we get any better than that? I, I don't think we can. See, uh, I guess, I guess we can. Well, um, I just want to mention this. I'm I've never used this program, um, but I know a lot of people have, and that's where all of the 1080p uh, Wii screenshots come from. And it's an emulator called Dolphin, and uh, a new version um, has just been released. It's version 4.0. And um, the big thing about this one, um, where other versions just allowed you to play in higher resolutions and stuff like that, this one has beta support for official online multiplayer. So it allows you to connect to online multiplayer servers and, and partake in online matches from your PC. So if you can somehow plop your a Wii U Smash Brothers disc into your computer and run the emulator, you can actually play smash brothers online with a friend that way pretty damn cool i'm actually kind of excited about that although i will never own a pc that would play this and i don't think it runs well under um mac os um there's a mac os build um, but i don't know how well it runs so i probably never will do it but um I don't know, that's kind of a, a neat little feature. Um, so if you want to check out uh, the Dolphin emulator, it's dolphin-emu.org. And you can download Dolphin 4.0 for Windows, Mac, and Linux. And uh, make it look all pretty um, because uh, you can play it in 1080p or more um, instead of the 480i or 480p that you could get out of the Wii. Oops, if you... Um, if you had the, the proper component cables, um, you could have done that. So um, online stuff, pretty cool. I don't see when you're going to check it out. Does this pique any I, interest at all? I have never been able to successfully get Dolphin running on uh, any computer right. at all. Uh, Windows or Mac, It just I just can't get it running. Um, I'll, I'll get error messages all over the place. And it's just way too complex. They didn't make it. Uh, it's not user-friendly at all. Right, it's not like... It's, like, it's not like you can just open it, you know, install it or run it and, right. you know, grab a ROM and run it like you can with like a Super NES emulator or something sure. like that. This is way more complex. You have to configure all this stuff. Yeah. You need and, and it BIOS has to, and stuff. It's well, yeah. Just, and it, it has to, uh, it emulates the CD or the DVD drive. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it can actually, it supports DVDs in the drive or you can make an ISO and you have to make it in the proper format. So you have to rip, yeah. rip your disc with but whatever. But it can't read Wii disc discs. Tool. In your DVD drive, unless you have like this one or oh, that's one of right. these like one or two disc models or whatever. Right. Yeah. So I was like, I was going <clears> to <throat> test it out with like one of my. I have like a library of forty-five, fifty, maybe fifty-five Wii games. Right. And I was going to try a couple of them and see how they look in fourteen forty p on my iMac, uh, and nothing. Just wow. it wouldn't read the discs. So. Yeah, I I kind of want to try it out just to see how, how the games run. But I mean, I have I've I have a three D or uh, a Wii U. I can just put the games in the Wii U, yeah. and play. Um, they won't and look they as pretty. Work. They they'll yeah. be up resed, um, <laughs> but not the same way yep. that Dolphin does. But it, sure. it it'll it'll just work, and I won't rip out hair, and I won't be sad, and I won't get yep. angry, I won't punch my screen. Yep, yeah, it'll just just work. So I think I might do right. that instead. But yeah, and people, this is kind of a silly, a silly thing. I mean, I, I understand the appeal of it, but it seems like something with really, really limited appeal because everybody has at least one Wii in their home. <laughs> yeah, I have two. You know one, what I mean? One's it's, completely broken. The other one isn't. Um, yeah. And then I have a Wii U, which is a pseudo Wii, I guess. Um, yeah. So that's there as well. Yeah, I, I have... Let's see, how many Wiis are in my home? Uh, there's the Wii in my bedroom. There's 
the Wii U here, and then I have the Wii, the Wii minus, the Canadian Wii minus. <laughs> Nice. I have that up on the shelf in the box. So. Nice. We mini, right? Is that what it's called? Yeah. The, I like calling the, it we minus them. The, the the useless we. Yeah. It's so cool looking. I want like I want somebody to like come up with the easy tutorial to like mod that thing into something amazing. Because it's just so cool looking. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. Crazy, mm-hmm. crazy, crazy. All right, man. Yeah. Jake Hargrith wants to know where where's the fun in things just working? And I'm gonna I'm going to explain to you exactly exactly how I got to to where I am with this. I want things to just work. Years ago, I was a Windows user. <laughs> <laughs> and that says it all right there. Yeah. Now I only buy Macs and they're more expensive <laughs> and you could really only get them in one place and I know they have their drawbacks like you have to boot to Windows to play video games. But I will never ever ever go back (laughs) a few nights ago i booted to windows on my imac and it did a software update where it changed something and all of a sudden it was unable to read it was unable to see my keyboard nice that i mean what do you need a keyboard for really you'd think it would be something pretty simple so but you don't really need one of those i mean no no, they're, they're useless these days. Sure, because the instructions that I found online uh, were to boot to safe mode, which means you need to hold a key <laughs> on the keyboard. Nice. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, I spent a... over four hours. I oh. spent over four hours, and then I did, I did like a rage on Twitter, a rage quit <laughs> of Windows on Twitter, uh, and it's fixed now. It's fixed now. It, it worked. How did you but, did, did how did you make it work? Did it just start working, or did you have to do something crazy? In, in I had to um I had to pull out the drivers for uh, I had to pull out my Bluetooth drivers, my USB drivers, and um, delete them so that it was not able to reinstall them. And then I had to reboot, and I had to tell it to reinstall the drivers from a specific place. And then after it did that, and it rebooted, <laughs> then I was able to reconnect my Bluetooth keyboard. Nice. Well. So simple, simple, this straightforward stuff. Why and didn't that, you do that, Jake Hargooth? Why didn't you do that in the first place, Stephen? That's it's your own fault, really, is what we're trying to say. <laughs> right, <here. laughs> right. A software update. Don't don't you know when Microsoft does a software update, this is how you have to respond to that by undoing the damage. That I'm it rolling my eyes right now. Is what I'm doing. Like, oh my god, Stephen, how noob can you be? Really, really, I should know by now. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's ridiculous. It yeah, absolutely I'm never going back. Hundred percent. I'm never ridiculous. going back to dealing with Windows See, every day. Um, I I run all PCs at work. Um, mm. in when I do IT for my day job, um, but I run them on Macs. So I run yeah. VMware in a. I so I run Windows in a VM, so that if Windows breaks, I just take the VM and I drag it to the trash and I empty the trash and I cackle and then I put my <laughs> disk in that has a fresh version of that disk image and I drag it back and I double click it and it works and it's like oh look your PC's working now, no problems and then I walk away and whistling mm. a happy tune, um, as compared to before um, when dealing with a, a PC was just like ripping out yeah. hair and teeth and other bodily appendages all the time Um, you know i bought vmware fusion for um for this computer mm -hmm. so that i could not have to do that dual booting thing sure and i just faced too many issues with it i just had too many problems it was always with the windows activation it was supposed to override the windows activation but it was unable to do it so once again windows kicked me in the kidneys (laughs) Yeah, I hate that operating system. I hate it. Nice. And it's so ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Windows Seven is so ugly. Uh, it could be anyway. worse. It could be Windows Eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Windows Eight is worse. Yep, yep. All right. Well, that's enough uh, Windows computer bashing. Um, yeah. I think that's going to about do it for this uh, episode of the show, man. That's good because I think I need a nap. <laughs> cranky, you're a cranky old man now. I was doing great. Now you're grumpy cat. Toon Link and in Smash, I was all excited. <laughs> That's so new; they've never done that before. Nintendo's so innovative. <laughs> oh my goodness! All right, let's uh, let's put on some music. How about I put on some uh, some Smash some Brothers Smash music. Brothers music? How about uh, Star Fox or how about Legend of Zelda Ocarina? Okay. All right, we'll do that. Well, that playing in the back. Oh, wait, I muted me, so there we go. And my copies right. of Curious Village will dance 
well. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, we love that you subscribe. You can subscribe over at vgpodcast.com. Let us know what you think. Emailing us at vgpodcast at gmail.com or call our voicemail line, which is area code 505 VG Podcasts. And uh, if you're not watching the video, you're you're not seeing various game discs dancing on the screen in front of you and you're missing a lot. So check it out at YouTube, youtube.com slash vgpod. But that's going to about do it for this week. Steven, thanks again for joining me. Hey. My pleasure. And here's Batman. (laughs) And we'll talk to you guys in about a week's time. Take it easy.